micro channel coil versus copper coil what's the better coil why do some technicians say avoid micro channel coils what's easier to maintain what's more durable let's go ahead and start today's video you're watching HVAC tips for technicians and a little bit of homeowner information as well if you're a homeowner today I'm gonna to give you information about these two types of coils if you've been told to avoid micro channel today I'm gonna to tell you why hit the like button hit the bell ding so you know what I'm doing and do not forget to subscribe if you got a question put it in the comments because questions become content if you don't have a question let me know who you are and let me know where you're from let's go ahead and start today's video this is a copper coil can you tell that's copper this is an aluminum coil and this is known as a micro channel coil first i'm going to talk about the maintaining or the cleaning now the micro channel coil does not have to be cleaned with coil cleaner you can just use water the copper coil usually you clean this with coil cleaner and i'll show you what coil cleaner i use before we end today's video but maintaining this coil, in my opinion, gets dirtier a lot quicker than this coil. This coil, you have to spend more time cleaning in between these rows. There are about 10 to 15 tubes in each one of these, and they run this way, okay? There's several tubes, and this coil is a little bit easier to clean you got a lot more space in between each copper run so it's a little bit easier to clean you use coil cleaner with this coil to clean and you don't use coil cleaner with this coil when you clean it this one gets dirtier faster and this one doesn't get as dirty as quick now let's talk about durability as far as durability goes this coil is definitely easier to damage i have had roofing companies uh, re-roof a home and then after they get done a nail falls into the unit and it goes through the coil i have had a homeowner weed eat near the unit and hit some of the aluminum and it damages the coil as far as repairing each coil when they do get damaged the copper coil is going to be much easier to repair because you're going to use some solder and this is the type of solder that i use i'll show you that here in a second and you're going to use some oxyacetylene or a turbo torch and then with the micro channel coil there is a kit that i use it's made by source one it comes with some filler metal a little steel brush and some instructions i'll post a link in the description for a couple videos if you want to see me repairing a micro channel coil i've got a couple videos where i actually had to repair a couple micro channel coils and it was successful and sometimes i temporarily fix the coil especially Especially if it's under warranty and then I get the new coil in and go ahead and replace it but with a uh, copper coil you're gonna use your torches and then this right this is Silphos 15 okay this is what I use to braise up that copper coil and then I'll post the link in the description for the kit that I use for fixing micro channel coils it's easier to repair copper coils but you still can repair a micro channel coil this is the type of coil cleaner that we use for cleaning out those outdoor condenser coils if you do have to use coil cleaner on a micro channel coil let me talk to you about it if you're going to use a detergent or a coil cleaner on a micro channel coil make sure you wash it out good you do not want to increase the rate of corrosion on that coil and you want to make sure that you use a neutral ph coil cleaner okay not something very acidic because you will end up causing more corrosion and more damage to the coil and also you know as well as i do you cannot leave coil cleaner on the coil you must wash it all off and make sure you do a good job of getting all that coil cleaner off of the condenser coil when you go to clean it micro channel coils may have better heat transfer they may be cheaper they do hold less refrigerant charge, so it doesn't take as much refrigerant charge, but they are easily damaged. And when you have technicians who are not experienced enough to fix a leak that happens in a micro channel coil, then you may be out of air for a little bit longer than if you would have had a leak in a copper coil because most technicians, they can fix a copper coil, but they might not be able to fix a micro channel coil. I strongly suggest that you're, if you're an HVAC technician watching this video and you don't have experience fixing a micro channel coil, go down in the link in the description, click on those two videos, one of those two, or watch both and get some more experience and learn about the kit that you can use and then look at the process that it takes to fix that 
type of coil. Also, you may be able to use a turbo torch to fix a leak in a copper coil, but you will most definitely have to use either a map gas torch or maybe oxy acetylene torch because you will not need a big flame to fix that leak in the micro channel coil. This is the type of set that I use to repair the micro channel coil right here, oxy acetylene. And to wrap up this video, I wanna tell you that if you're purchasing a new unit, I wouldn't be scared of the micro channel coils. I would just make sure that you have a good contractor and you have a good maintenance plan. If you're an HVAC homeowner watching this, make sure that you get your unit serviced and cleaned at least once a year so that you make sure that there's not a lot of dirt and debris and dust inside that micro channel coil because it takes a lot less dirt inside of a micro channel coil to make that head pressure rise than it does a copper coil and you wanna make sure that you stay on top of the maintenance. Wanna also mention that it is easier to overcharge a micro channel coil as well. So make sure that you know that my fellow technicians, make sure you wait at least 15 minutes after you initially charge a micro channel coil. That way you make sure that the head pressure is not gonna skyrocket because you put too much refrigerant in it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more, hit the like button, subscribe and hit that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you want help, you want tech support, you want me to walk you through your project, you need a guide, click the join button. Become a member, let me know in the comments, say I joined, I'll give you my email, that'll lead to contact with me. You need my phone number, you need FaceTime, you need me to consult for you, help you design your duct work, help you with your mini split. Whatever the needs are, just join, become a member, and let me know what you need, and I'm here to help. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.